Welcome everybody to this webinar of the VTCAST uh, product, the goal of which is the development of innovative solutions for the solution of fungal uh, diseases. This is a product we have been working on uh, since 2009 and uh, we will uh, show you the results um, and the outcomes. My name is uh, Lucia Lloret from FEUGA, and we are partners in charge of the coordination and the management of the project together with Monet, which is the company representative of the project. And we are in charge of uh, dissemination of results and the transference of the VTCAST solutions in order to implement these uh, solutions or, through the, or by the final user. I'm going to speak very briefly of who we are and um, what we do. And I will explain in general lines. I will give you a general uh, vision of the project and the rest of the speakers are going to um, see the different parts of the innovation. Well, we are located in Galicia with uh, the headquarters in, Gal in uh, Santiago and Vigo and the permanent headquarters in Bruselas, well, an office in Bruselas, Brussels. And we have been working for over 30 years acting as a transfer um, office. We develop collaboration actions among universities, the entrepreneurial sector, the industry, society, and the public administration mainly from the different departments of uh, national projects. We devote ourselves to the promotion and management of R plus D plus I projects, as well as um, result exploitation. In this slide, you can see the previous um, experience that we have in FEUGA, in European projects such as Inter Interreg, etc. the framework, the Horizon 2020 framework program, as well as national projects. We have 10 operational groups, including VTCAST, 14 now since we have been approved for more projects. And we have different roles uh, because we render different services. We look for um, partners, uh, we identify ways to finance, and once uh, these projects are um, have been approved, we um, also enter into the technical part. <coughs> Our role in WITICAST is uh, carrying out uh, dissemination actions and communication ones. These actions are carried out with the aim of, on the one hand, the most important goal is to transfer the results and the outcomes of the research or research to the final user, users, but the opposite as well. Uh, innovative practices that might be uh, being carried out on the ground, in, the, in this case in viticulture or wine culture, um, we transfer them to the researchers and we inform them about the needs, the barriers by final users, so that the research that is being carried out will um, give a solution to real problems and will be implemented, as well as um, exchange, uh, knowledge exchange actions between different actors, uh, wine growers, for example, final users, researchers, etc., so as to foster good practices. These activities that we carry out in FEUGA in the viticulture sector have been uh, carried out uh, for more than 10 years. We have experience in certain types of projects and others that are in preparation. And this is due to the importance of the winemaking sector in Galicia, which is our region. Here you can see different projects. Uh, you can see on the upper part of the, uh, or the lower part of the, um, screen. These are national projects, including Viticast, 
And we um, also show other types of projects, more international ones that are the ones that you can see on the top part of the slide. Uh, we have projects um, addressing analogy, such as the development of models for the forecast of uh, different, uh, the yields of different um, types of grapes, for example. Uh, we have, uh, for example, participated in IPM Works, uh, the creation of a hub in the wine growing sector about the integrated control of infestations in the vineyard. And uh, Vineo T, um, the goal of which is uh, the application of precision viticulture um, sector based on IoT net sensors for the digital transformation. And focusing on Viticast. Well, this is an innovation uh, project by an operational group. What, what's an operational group? Well, they gather agents of different profiles with common interests. Uh, on the one hand, the final users are represented, such as farmers, ranchers, companies, uh, also researchers, or more transversal or cross-sectional entities, such as FEWA, are also represented here. We join forces in order to give a solution from different multi-sectoral um, points of view, so as to give a response to some issues, some problem, in this case, the problem of fungal diseases and the need to optimize the use of phytosanitary products. Viticast has is funded within the National Programme for Rural Development 2014-2020 framework. And we have received a, a grant of almost 600,000 euros and the total budget is 615,249.08 euros. So who can participate in this uh, project as well as uh, all of you participating in this webinar? Well, we are represented mainly by MONET, Technology and Innovation. They are in charge of developing prediction and forecast models. Also, the other um, winemaking or wine growers, such as Viña Costeira and Mata Romera, the Pontevedra City Council, uh, Hacienda Monasterio, the FEUGA, and also we have uh, outsourced the Vigo University, and we have three different collaborators with an interest on the results of the project and uh, on whom we um, base ourselves uh, so as to reach a wider audience. And I'm talking about the um, the technological wine platform and the uh, collaborators do Ribeiro and the Asociación Galega de Viticultura, which is the Galician Winemaking Association. Our goal is to improve the quality of the production and to develop the sustainable cultivation of the vine throughout the integrated management of the main fungal diseases, uh, especially powdery mildew, downy mildew, and botrytis. Uh, botrytis. Um, this is in order to optimize the use of phytosanitary products to improve the quality of the wine, to provide greater protection of the environment and to optimize the production costs. Here you can see a summary of the project um, so as to be able to reach these different um, uh, results. We have been developing these uh, three fungal uh, groups of um, of fungi um, so as to develop um, phenology, grapevine phenological cycle, uh, also uh, using the meteorological or the weather stations, we um, also assess the meteorological conditions. Uh, we also work on meteorological prediction and forecast as well as, and this is a major um, breakthrough of the project in terms of innovation, we also measure the concentration of spores. And the different um, partners in the project will um, speak and explain uh, every one of the different legs of the project. 
And uh, well, in this webinar, we have been um, giving uh, some detail, but you will find more information on the project's uh, webpage, which is uh, www.vitcast.es and you will find uh, also a tab on dissemination where you will find different materials for your download. We have infography, um, dissemination articles, scientific uh, articles, etc. And you will find um, news um, about our new results, uh, publications on the mass media, TV, radio, press, and uh, two technical videos where we give more details on how uh, we count the spores. And there's another technical video for the development of models. As uh, I was saying, uh, www.vitcast.es. And this is all from me, as I was saying, um, the different uh, partners will um, give you the um, explanation on, of every one of the uh, parts uh, or the legs of this table. Well, we will hear the uh, Deborah Franco, who speaks, who will speak on behalf of Monet Tecnología and Innovation, and she um, and we will also have Rosa Pérez from the Areiro Phytopathological Station in Pontevedra, Mr. Javier Rajo from the Vigo University, Mr. Carlos Alberte from Viña Costeira, Mr. Victor Vendrell from Bodega Mato Romera, and finally, Mr. Vicente Abete from Bodegas Hacienda Monasterio SL. So I am going to give the floor to Deborah Franco um, and uh, it will, they are um, a company that is giving um, support um, tools. Uh, Deborah, whenever you want, you can share your screen with us. Okay, thank you very much. I am going to explain very briefly what is Viticast. In order to explain the beginning of the project, as uh, uh, she just mentioned, coming to explain what is Monet. We were created in 2014 with a mission to provide sellers and uh, producers a software to support. With this objective, we have this developed Monet Viticulture, Viticultura, where we can control the vineyard from any internet connected device. Our main uh, line of uh, research are prediction models of fungal diseases. And the main objective is to reduce in uncertainty in order to decide when to apply a certain procedure. We started using the literature at the essays and we started testing in different geographical areas with different types of grapes and different lots. The classical models analyzing the cycle of life of the fungus only take into account meteorological conditions. But with the objective of improving provision of these models, we decided to incorporate another very important area, which is phenology, variety of grape and other features of the, of the crop. Yeah. With this main research line, we uh, then uh, developed other, other lines such as uh, meteor meteorological prediction and phenology. In the second one, we developed uh, models for the different varieties of grace. And as for meteorology, it is important to have a local forecast affecting the lot, not that the global one, that, uh, the, the one we are more used to using. So to summarize right now, MONET models take into account not just uh, variables from the uh, 
meteorolog meteorological point of view, but also uh, local variables. And that is where VTCAST was uh, created when we asked ourselves what were the other variables that we could be using that's when we decided to analyze the spores in the in the atmosphere so that we can we could find other information in this slide you can see this idea in a summarized way where we can see on the upper screen captation or collection of information of data for that, we installed a weather station for each lot so that we can have a meteorological forecast for that uh, precise lot. Then we carry out a phenology research or the different the technicians from the sellers carry out as they will be explaining later on. And also we are alert to any symptoms of any diseases. And we also get information about any sort of uh, dealing with the, or, or uh, action on the vineyards, such as or more specifically, um, any treatments. We also uh, catch or collect other data, as will be explained later on. The main objective is to use all these data in order to have a model providing at risk information to decide on where, when and what is the uh, best moment and best treatment to apply the, the best moment to apply a treatment. The main problem addressed here is how to deal with these endemic diseases like the powdery mildew, downy mildew and pathetis that can create very severe uh, losses in production. Facing this problem many times due to fear to lose part of the production, many phytosanitary treatments are excessive or they do take into account meteorological conditions that don't really uh, present any risk. This excess of uh, phytosanitary products may lead to resistances, appearances of resistances. It is also a, an important significant risk of pollution and incre in increases production costs. Three very undesired effects, both for the sellers and society. Here you can see the participants in the project. As Lucia just mentioned, I would just say that uh, Monet Viticultura, which I uh, speak on behalf of, provided technological development, then Fuga offers the um, know-how on the uh, uh, dif dissemination of the project. We uh, work with Mata Romera, Viña Costeira and Hacienda Monasterio, providing the lots and the uh, material where to test. Also, the uh, phytopathological station via Areiro is also providing us with uh, space to test our model. And also the University of Vigo provides us with uh, the media to uh, research on the spores collected. We have uh, subcontra subcontracted the University of Santiago de Compostela and uh, as collaborators, the uh, different associations of uh, sellers and viticulture. Our main objective, as Lucia was also mentioning, is to provide innovative solution in the uh, treatment and prediction of fungal diseases, in this case, it's mildew, powdery dew uh, and butter juice in order to improve the quality of wine and to protect our uh, environment and to optimize production costs. All these objectives could be summarized in just wine to apply phytosanitary treatment only if there is a real and objective disease risk. In order to determine this risk, we start from the models developed by Monet, taking into account meteorological and phenological parameters, and we add information about the presence of the phytopathogen in the environment. We, work, we are working on eight uh, experimental lots scattered in the four um, assignation of uh, appellation of origins, 
as you can see here, Rivas, uh, Rivas Baches, Ribeiro, Baldo, Raz, and Rivera Duero. So where we established, we set up a sport collector and uh, we mark different uh, vines where we carry out the study of uh, both the uh, meteorolo meteorological and fungical uh, data. We collect samples and we analyze the uh, residue and, and we, we compare the two areas, the Pitticast area and the conventional area. And then in order to compare if there has been an improvement in the, the wine, in the wine, we also compare the, the collected wine in order to carry out an analysis, a comparative analysis. Well, here we can start talking about results. Uh, particularly mildew, down in mildew. The first thing we do to model mildew is to estimate the conditions for the uh, ripening of the spores. Then we compare the results with the results of the ripening of spores in the field done by the phytopathological station in Areiro. And in 2021, we can see that in the area of Rias Baixas Condado and the area of Ribeiro, the ripening of spore was completed uh, on March the 17th, as the EFA uh, corroborated in its report. Then the Val de Orras was the, the following one, and the last one was in Rivera del Duero on uh, May the 9th. So we can see that ripening happens from uh, east to west, and that there is around 12, two months uh, difference. Once the winter spore has ripened, we start calculating conditions so that the first infection can happen. In this particular case, in this slide, this was completed, they did this infection uh, on April the 2nd. This infection process has an uh, incubation process associated to it that can finish or not. In this case, it finished. It ended on April the 10th when it reached 100%, but sometimes incubation does not happen when, for instance, high temperatures uh, occur. When this incubation starts in going into jumps, uh, ups and downs, that's when we can see the stains of mildew on the vine. The first one was seen on April the 7th. Once the incubation, primary incubation st uh, finishes, we start estimating the condition of conditions of uh, Inspiration, which were reached on the April the 10th. And then after sporulation is reached, we start calculating secondary infection and associated incubation processes, exactly the same as in the uh, primary ones. This process is repeated all over the campaign and it follows the same model of uh, infection and associated incubation processes. In the case of powdery mildew, models take into account the level of pressure of the uh, condition. That means that if the conditions are fa favorable or not to the reproduction of the uh, fungus, when the risk is low, that means the pathogen is uh, slowly reproducting, reproducting so that we can uh, extend the process of treatment. When the risk is high, that means that the interval between treatments should be shorter. In this graph, you see the results of one of the experimental lots in this campaign for two different models. The first model shown in a continuous line is a model based exclusively on uh, meteorological conditions. And the model shown with uh, dots here, apart from uh, con uh, meteorological conditions, takes into account a phenological state. And its objective is to protect the, um, the, the grape. So, in those times when the grape is more sensitive to the disease, we can see that the risk is higher. And when the uh, uh, crop, the, the, the grape is not as sensitive as, as 
as compared to the other one, we consider that the uh, risk is lower. So when we see this data, we see that both models work more or less in the same ways. So you see that uh, they are very uh, similar radius, but when the um, the grape was not as sensitive, we see a difference, a wider difference. So the difference between taking into account phenology as compared to one without that condition or that variable that would in affect us in the uh, timing if we uh, consider a, a risk showing a hundred percent risk we would be applying one model than if uh, the data would point otherwise in the case of pythotrees here we can see results of uh, four significant episodes of botrytis. Uh, the first one, first one was in May, and the other one was in June. They were very sporadic episodes with just two days of duration, with no symptoms on the vineyard. But the, the beginning of July, three consecutive episodes of botrytis were recorded they uh, lasted from the 2nd to the 8th of July, where we were able to appreciate, to, to see uh, the symptoms. And also in August, there were two different episodes where we were able to see uh, effects on the vineyard and we could rec uh, collect the data as such. Last, but not least, as for results, I'm going to present uh, the results for the prediction of uh, spore concentration. The first thing to do is to collect uh, with a collector the spores and then to count the spores. Uh, we will be listening to how this is done later on in the session, but I just wanted to say that very specific staff, very qualified staff must uh, carry out this quantification. These staff collect the uh, bands uh, of spores and counts the spores using mm, microscopes and they delivered these graphs for the three different fungus. We have a number of spores along the time on the different dates of the campaign. This is what we use in order to, uh, to, to feed the prediction models. Here you can see one of the neuronal networks used for the development of this model. The inputs are the uh, measured data with the meteorological stations and the outputs are the uh, risk of disease. This neuronal network takes into account, into account the spores recount or uh, count, and also the field observations, both from the phenological point of view uh, to, and also the uh, symptomatology on the plants. We collect all the data from 2020 and 2021, and we divided that into two groups. The first group was the training data where uh, that, that are used to to train the model and the other half uh, are the test data with it after the model is trained we use the test data and we can see the performance we can see that higher success percentage was uh, uh, achieved for oedio for uh, sorry for uh, downy mildew and we also reflect here in the case that there is a failure, we analyze whether that is a false uh, positive or a false negative. That would mean that the model is saying that there is a risk when it, in fact there isn't any risk, which is not as, as uh, serious as the opposite way around. That's what we use to minimize uh, actual risk. And then what are the impact and benefits that we can uh, achieve with this sort of tool. First of all, to improve uh, environmental and social sustainability and the re reduction of the use of uh, phytosanitary products, which will enhance the competitiveness of the viticulture sector through wine qualities and uh, less production co costs. I was all from my side. Thank you so much. I will be at your disposal. Thank you so much. I just wanted to remind you all, if you have any questions, 
you can uh, ask that in the uh, platform section of uh, questions and answers. Now, let's give the floor to the uh, research centers. First of all, Rosa Perez in Areiro, uh, belonging to the Diputación de Pontevedra. She is a um, uh, chief or the phytopathology section of this institution. So, Rosa, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lucia. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this webinar. As Lucia was saying, I am Rosa Perez Sotero, and I'm going to tell you about the work that we conduct in the Viticast, uh, within the Viticast uh, framework in the center where I work in Areiro. For those people that have not been present in uh, similar events, I would like to first introduce you to our center, uh, the working center and the area. Areiro is an institute depending on the uh, Pontevedra uh, Council which is a provincial local um, administration located in the area, the northwest area or corner of Spain in Galicia. We are a center devoted to practical research, to diagnosis and uh, advice in terms of um, forestry and agriculture in touching on different scopes, such as uh, edaphology, fruticulture, and agroecology. And we work on both agriculture and forestry, as I said. We depend of a local administration, and although we have collaborations and projects where we participate with uh, or national or international institutions and companies, our main scope of work is our province and therefore within that priority area of work our function is or our role is to give advice to the province municipalities the nearby municipalities and the um, special feature of such a center depending on a local administration is that we are also um, um, warning, agricultural warning center or station, because these stations normally have a more regional kind of reach, but in our case, it is a more local. Obviously, we, as I said, we depend on the um, Pontevedra Council, which is a local administration. So provincial administration, and in this province, the, uh, the um, vine growing uh, is the most important um, sector, or agricultural sector. And we have an appellation of origin, which is a quality seal for wines, which is um, Rias Baixas. This is the name of the appellation of origin. And you can see the black squares on the slide. These are the different um, areas composing this um, appellation of origin. And uh, currently there is a new one, which is called Riberias do Morrazo, which is a protected geographical indication. And the most important variety for us in these uh, places is Alvariño which is a variety uh, of white wine, as everybody knows, a white wine variety. Apart from um, these two things, I mean, appellation of origin and protected geographical indication, as I was saying, vineyards are extremely important for us. And there are many plots that are out of these quality and protection figures or scopes where wine growers carry out their interventions without um, having any technical criteria in some occasions or many occasions according to pre-established schedules and where the goals uh, are 
goals and necessary goals by imposed by the European Union in terms of strategy development uh, to benefit the environment and that should not be harmful for human health, such as traditional um, practices. Well, these measures are not about, about by uh, the ones proposed by the European Union and also on a worldwide level. Within this scope, trying to correct those bad practices that many of these plots conduct that are normally very small, extremely small plots um, or exploitations, um, but even including back practices in the uh, appellation of origin areas, there are some proposals uh, such as what Viticast is proposing and also phytosanitary warnings, which are used as support tools for farmers so that they can better protect their crops, in this case, vineyards. It is very important. This is very important in our province because, as I was saying, there is a lot of uh, vineyard um, spread across the geography, the local geography, and there are many farmers that do not live directly out of a vineyard, but they conduct systematic interventions that should be rejected or abandoned. So these phytosanitary warnings give advice and indicate whether there is a risk or not. And we in Areiro are also including um, the results of the Viticast project outcomes. We have been dealing with warnings for 20 years and um, a lot of people read our um, publications. The Areiro phytosanitary warnings, which is which are the justification of why Areiro is participating on this project, we conduct them um, using three different um, vineyard plots in the uh, Rias Baixas appellation of origin, so the Sarnes, El Rosal, and El Condado areas. In nineteen in twenty nineteen, we started with the Ribeiras do Morrazo protected area, but then the famous pandemia or pandemic came limiting our movements and we had to reduce the number of um, excursions or outings on the ground. What we um, intervene, where we intervene is in these plots, control plots that you can see here, are always according the Areiro indications, and we also have some other plots that we visit here and then or some sometimes, and the wine grower intervenes according to their own criteria, either in a systematic way or whenever they can, because as I said, not all, all wine growers devote 100% of their time to these tasks. So summing up or adding our Areiro knowledge plus Viticast results, we make these warnings or phytosanitary warnings. And I have to say, I would like to show off a little, and I would like to say that we're doing pretty well. Uh, in We provide these um, warnings every week. We communicate on Friday normally. This is the day chosen for this. And our statistics appear in our web page, as you can see here, and they, you can see that the visitors or the visits to our web page during those days increase significantly. Once we have presented what is Areiro and once I have explained why are we participating in this project, I am going to tell you what do we do within the project or in the framework of the project. In our case, and we will see that a bit later on, we focus on mildew. And this is due to the fact that, as you have seen, Pontevedra, the province, is located at the northwest of Galicia, well, of Spain, which is an area with a humid, clearly humid climate due to the Atlantic influence 
and also with very mild and soft um, temperatures that tend to be uh, a bit high, warm. Um, those people not optimizing their treatments in such a year as the current one where we have precipitations and high temperatures, they can apply up to 20 different treatments in just one season, which is absolutely crazy. Furthermore, taking into account that due to bad advice, some people are applying more than one uh, phytosanitary product against mildew at a certain moment because somebody just told them to do, those, to do so. Well, so you have a mixture of anti-mildew mildew, um, treatments plus something against the oidium or against some pests that we might not have well, the environmental risk is obvious, and hence the need to implement more sustainable strategies, obviously, with no doubt. Our work in Areiro, summing up, is we determine uh, in a practical way the oospore germination of P. viticola, the pathogen. Then we conduct a follow-up and a monitoring of grapevine phenology in our plots. We also carry out a monitoring of downy mildew symptoms. In every one of the plots, we have spore collectors and we count, collect counts and identify those spores. Then we decide on the moment to treat the plant in our plots according according to the climate forecast and the climate current data and the different forecasts or weather forecasts. We also test or assess that uh, whether the treatments have been efficient, which is normally not or has not been done in our area traditionally, but it is absolutely essential. And we are now, well, uh, providing or giving these phytosanitary warnings and advice, and we decide upon the application of treatments. And we also uh, make these warnings. So our methodology is practical uh, for the determination of spore germination of P. viticola. And from 1997, we have been doing or carrying out this, uh, following this methodology, thanks to an interreg project. So we use this method in order to provide information in our phytosanitary warnings and within Viticast in order to compare with the results of the models. This practical method can be read in the bibliography, but let's say that in autumn we collect leaves uh, that were suffering from mildew in our area. This affects almost every area then we uh, see them under the magnifying glass, the binocular magnifying glass, and we detect the spores that you can see here under the microscope. We cut um, the air, leaf area with spores and we introduce them in these double mesh um, bags that we cover very lightly with sand on the upper part and we bury them uh, simulating the hibernation or winter uh, over winter conditions then in spring we collect those bags we put them in ideal con conditions in the laboratories and we verify that the spores have germinated and produce the O spores. In this graph, you can see all the records of uh, the maturation data for these spores uh, in case of mildew, the downy, the first downy mildew symptoms. And we can see that our theory, that is very wet and soft winters, accelerate uh, the maturation of O spores. Uh, before time, 
but this is not um, a 100 percent um, kind of um, rationale because in uh, we had a very very dry winter which was uh, 20 17 and you can see the um, maturation day of the ospore was more or less the same so even though Viticast is a technological tool with this you can prove that the fields well the uh, the presence on the ground is still or on the field is still essential once the ospore has is mature or has started its ripening process, then we monitor the grapevine phenology. You can see the two plots um, from the air. The first one is the uh, vineyard of the Areiro phytopathologic station in itself. It's a relatively young uh, plot, 12 years of age. And the other plot is not our own. It belongs to a um, proprietor, an owner that has been with us for many, many years. And she collaborates with us in the phytosanitary warnings in these plots. We conduct the follow-up and uh, it is us who decide what to do and when to do it. So it's not our own plot, but well, more or less, to practical effects, it is our own plot. And um, the age of this plot is 42 years. Here you can see the uh, different events. On the 11th of August, we stopped because uh, from the moment that in practically no interventions can be done, of course, we don't go to the ground or in the field very often. And in our plot, we decide on which treatments are going to be applied following the three criteria that you can read on the screen. And of course, as Lucia or Deborah mentioned before, out of the new treatments uh, or the new technologies, the most avant-garde one or the most um, innovation, innovative one is the uh, spore counting. So we use the knowledge of the Vigo University and um, some other academia institution. Um, I'm going to give the floor later to the Vigo colleague or the Vigo University colleague. So I'm going to just say that we prepare in our lab the different collectors. Uh, we prepare the cylinder with the band that collects the different spores. And in our laboratory, we prepare the samples and we count them. You, you can see here that on the first year of our project, we started counting on the 18th of September. And this was because the famous pandemic forcing us to all movement, uh, person and good movement restrictions, plus the lockdowns of people. Um, plus the bureaucracy linked to the fact of us belonging to an administration. Well, all this led to us having only one collector and we received our first collector, first and only one collector in August. In 2021, we had the second collector, but we had some operational problems or technical problems with it well, with the two collectors purchased but we succeeded in putting the two collectors to work in spring and you can see the daily uh, count which are similar graphs to the ones presented by Deborah before even though here we don't have many spores at the beginning or uh, figure in the graph in the beginning, it was due to the fact that, as I can, as I'm saying in those two green areas, um, until early May, no more than 10 sporangia per day and no more than 50 until the end of May. 
I'm talking about mildew only because we don't have mm, many spores in case of oidium in our plots. We can apply one or two treatments pro season. And in terms of botrytis, the specialists know that this is a pathology that depends on the previous health state of the grapes or the plants, the grapevine. And then, for example, if uh, the moths in the cluster do not give problems, then botrytis is really reduced importantly. So here you have the number of treatments that we applied both in the Viticast and the conventional plots with the plant distribution that you can see here. These are the ones in Areiro, in our plot, where we can see that the plants, the Viticast plants are, concentration, are con concentrated in this area, except for the um, foreign one and the ones here in Viticast. And this is due to the special situation of the Areiro plots where we see milieu highly concentrated in the first um, half of the plot because it is subject to much more shady areas. And well, the rest of the plot is uh, Viticast is occupied by Viticast plants. The, if the results are good in this area, the Viticast plants that are subject to more milieu pressure or pressure by milieu, we understand that they are going to work well in this, uh, give good results in this plot. As Areiro belongs to the council, the Pantevedra council, we, perf we perform a lot of um, experiments and we have in row number seven, we have uh, decided to not treat this row. Um, so this is a row without treatments to observe natural, natural pathogen evolution. And of course, here the number of spores is much higher than in the other plot, the one, uh, the 42 year old plot corresponding to the individual owner or proprietor. It is not about reducing treatments, but optimizing them. We have lowered the use of anti-milieu anti treatments from 15 to 10 uh, treatments in the plot. And uh, uh, this is uh, conducted in our Areiro plot where we never applied conventional treatments. Of course, we were against it from the beginning and we were not able to trim our Areiro um, plot before March, and therefore it was a bit late in the year. On the other hand, this is the 42-year-old plot, the one corresponding to the uh, individual proprietor or owner, and you can see here the conventional part. We have reduced treatments from nine because, well, they were really eight. Uh, because the ninth was given because the owner became a bit nervous. And she did not, she's a woman and she did not dare to be so, to, to act in, a, in such a risky way. So it was eight really, not nine, as you can see here on the slide, uh, versus 16. The woman knows that she should not apply so many treatments as the, she used to in the past. This is the same, including in Areiro and San Marcos, the um, treatment application moments or times. And I have marked three that are especially outstanding where we advanced ourselves a little bit to the maximum spore peak. It is very high in Areiro because the collector is located in the in those plants that were untreated, so the control row. We also applied, uh, well, I've assessed the effectiveness of these treatments, and you can see here the San Marcos Viticast plot results. Well, sorry, this is wrong. It, this is conventional, San Marcos conventional, where both in developed and young leaves, we see that the percentages of healthy leaves are really high. And here you see the same 
for the San Marcos cluster and here for Areiro clusters. And you can see here a high percentage of healthy clusters or bunches. And even though in Areiro we reduced treatments, the percentages are excellent. Logically, in terms of young leaves, the results are not so good because we have stopped our interventions very early in our plots. And therefore, all the milieu that comes to the young leaves, we leave them, we leave the milieu develop in those leaves. It doesn't matter to us because um, the plants in our vineyards are really developing very well and we have enough leaves so as to allow for a good grape uh, ripening. I forgot to say that the few affected leaves and clusters did never exceed the um, percentage of the occupied surface area, um, 99, 96%. And an innovation that we have introduced, which is not included in the Viticast uh, project, we have introduced this because we cannot uh, conduct vitro vinifications. This is related to the study of phytosate mites, because a lot of specialists, as, as, as a lot of specialists know, the most natural enemies of the plants are more abundant in those areas, untreated areas. The um, useful phytosate mites are very sensitive to interventions in the environment or in the atmosphere and also very sensitive to human interventions. In a previous test, we checked that comparing a vineyard plot treated conventionally um, according to the wine growers criterion uh, in comparison with an optimization of treatments criterion, the results were much better in terms of the presence of phytosade mites that can be used as a bio indicator of uh, the quality um, of these leaves. And as you can see here, these are results only from the last year. According to our data, we see that in the Areiro plot, except for this date where we have the same number of phytosade mites in the Viticast and in the conventional plots, we see that in general, we have more phytosade mites in the Viticast. And although we need to say that we have many in the conventional plot, why? Because in Areiro, we have been optimizing treatments for years in our vineyard in terms of strategy and also the types of products that we're using. We're using the least aggressive products for the environment, uh, aggressive for the environment products. So in San Marcos, the differences are not so evident, but still we see that the results are not bad, which would open a new research or work line, or who knows, maybe a continuity for the Viticast project. So this is all from me. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much, Rosa, for your presentation. Um, if you have any question uh, for the different um, presentations, you can leave them in the uh, Q&A in the chat. Particularly the uh, research group of uh, the investigation on fungical diseases and infection. He will be talking about the uh, count of spores, etc. So Javier, when you want all yours, you can start your presentation. Thank you so much. And thank you all for attending this webinar on this project that we are carrying out. Well, I will start my presentation, my participation in this session of dissemination by saying 
or presenting the two aspects of the project where our university is uh, working on. That is uh, on the first one, the reducing the number of treatments. And also, well, Viticast is not just focused on uh, phytosanitary treatments, but also on assessing in the incidence of climate change on uh, vineyards in our areas. I will start with the first uh, part with a adequation of uh, phytosanitary treatments. Okay, let's go ahead. Since 1995, we've been working on treating or uh, attempting to reduce the phytosanitary treatments on the vineyards starting from the principle of the triangle of disease. A disease only occurs when three circumstances happen at the same time. First, that uh, we have uh, the pathogen on the uh, ambience. Second, that the plant is right then uh, at a phenological state, uh, favorable for the reproduction of the pathogen. And uh, three, that at that time when the pathogen is in the vineyard, that the meteorological conditions are again favorable for the pathogen to induce disease in that vineyard. If any one of the three um, factors does not happen, or we, let's say, we do not meet that meteorological conditions or the phenological state or the uh, pathogen is not on the vine, yeah, then the treatment should not be necessary. In order for us to assess when the pathogen is in the vineyard, we use biosensors uh, like the concentrations of spores in the atmosphere, because the appearance of a spore means the presence of symptoms, visualized symptoms on the leaves and the bunches of the vine, depending on the phenological state between two, uh, sorry, four and seven days after the, uh, the presence. So the existence of spores on the vineyard is going to indicate how much uh, of the pathogen is there. And uh, then we can avoid that the vineyard suffers the symptoms and uh, lose bunches or lose uh, part of the vine. Let's look into the detail of the three aspects for the, uh, uh, well, we use these uh, volumetric uh, stations we put them in the middle of the vineyard and these catalyzers aspire the air in the vineyard at a speed of 10 liters per minute. That is more or less the same as a human. So the air goes into this uh, uh, tool and we can see the composition of the air, let's say. So the air goes into this hole and inside this uh, piece, the spores are retained. And here, the uh, black stain show the different particles in the atmosphere. We take these uh, pieces, we take them into the lab, and then we process all the samples that we will be uh, looking through the microscope. Here, you can see the different pathogens cells, the canidriums of uh, erysifesse uh, with this shape, and the sporangias of uh, uh, sporangia. We analyze these in the laboratory and we can create the curves of presence or absence of the pathogen. Here we can see the three different spores. And we can see an example here. We see here how they look in the microscope and it is very clear that the pathogen is there. We can see uh, the different particles. It is very difficult to differentiate them, but we do this using a very, or, or uh, by hiring very specialized uh, qualified staff. And thanks to our long standing experience where we have uh, collected so many um, samples, this methodology enables us to know concentrations of spores in the vineyard during, uh, in the vineyard during uh, the whole year round. And then we can identify the treatments to be applied. In this uh, slide, you can see the biological cycle.
In this slide, we see the biological cycle of the uh, tiny building tube. You can see the sexual cycle and also the evolution of the spore. And on the right side, you see the concentration of the spores all through the different stages of the phenology of the plant. We can see then the primary uh, infection. So you see here on the, uh, the beginning of March, this is the uh, proliferation of the spores, uh, the winter spores. And no bunch in the vineyard can be affected in this case, but at least we are able to see and uh, to identify the primary infections that we can later on assess is we will be having many secondary infections or not. This uh, primary infection can be a result of, let's say, to leave uh, debris on the vineyard, etc. And that is why we need to remove all those uh, debris before March. Now, looking into results of the Viticast project itself, when we assess them by phytopathogen, if we analyze the different concentrations in the different vineyards, we see that in the more Atlantic area, in the Rias Baixas area, that's where more plasma para, um, plasma para where this means that we need to carry out very uh, strong treatments and the uh, impact on the plant will be also to be significant. And by, or towards the end, uh, uh, sorry, to the center of Spain, the, its presence was almost uh, insignificant. In the case of uh, downy, uh, sorry, of powdery mildew, we see that in the central area here, between the Mediterranean area and the uh, uh, northern area, it show issue higher incidence on the vineyard with a peculiarity. In the area of, uh, of Euro-Siberian area, the pressure lasts until the uh, month of June, and from then on, it happens on the Ribera del Duero with higher concentrations of uh, powdery mildew, together with uh, severe issues with infection processes on the vineyard. Finally, in the case of patates, the area where more incidence was, uh, or potentially is more identified, is in the area of the Ribeiro, as compared to the other two areas where its incidence is very, very small. When we assess incidence of a total of fungical spores by au pair area, we will see that in the Rias Baixas, Pasmopara is the uh, more uh, commonly found, and in the Ribeiro area, in the uh, frontier, in the border between the Mediterranean and Atlantic worlds, Botrytis is the one with the higher incidence, and in the Balde Orres, more or less the same, and in the Ribera del Duero area, we have a similar performance, but pressure in the vineyards by the uh, powdery mildew is higher than in the other two. With all these concentrations of spores that we collect in the vineyard and through several different models, we can enhance the prediction horizon in order to predict when the spores will be located, will be uh, found in the vineyard, and we can expand this horizon prediction or this uh, prediction horizon, sorry, so that we are able to know uh, with two or three days in advance. So before the stain appears on the leaves, we are able to uh, go into action and combine all that with the meteorological uh, data. But for a disease to happen, we also need, so to say, to have a plant at a phenological stage susceptible to have the uh, disease inside. How do we know that? Well, we uh, find the chill requirements and heat requirements of the plant in order to 
to go through the different phenological stages. These uh, Monet, Monet viticulture has monitorized all these and modelized them, creating an app inform in us when the plants of the different appellations of origin in, within the study will be at that precise stage where a fungus is able to attack or not. And uh, finally, meteorological conditions are also digitalized thanks to Monet viticulture in order to know through algorithms when exactly the circumstances occur so that the fungus can be can reproduce or not. With all this data used with the Viticast project, we can then combine all this information, not just to know when the treatment can be applied, but also with several months in advance, what is the type of production that we will be having, which is one of the uh, applications of the Viticast project to know several months in advance how the uh, production will be in a different area that will help us to uh, know how many people to hire, uh, also to know to know what the amount of the insurance will be uh, in, or, in order to protect from uh, losses in, in production, and also to avoid presence in the different appellation of origin of foreign grape varieties that may lead to uh, alterations in the wine. Here, for instance, you can see different models that have been already uh, developed for the Godello variety. In these lines, you can see estimated production using our models. And in, in these bars, we see the actual production of the plot. And then we can uh, see how these models are very, very good at predicting exactly the type of uh, or, or the um, size of the production, in this case, with three months in advance. A second uh, part where we are working uh, on with the Viticans project is the impact of climate change on the uh, on the on these four areas with the, the one with the Atlantic influence, the uh, the second one with the uh, in influence of both Atlantic and uh, Mediterranean, a second transition area, and a fourth one, a completely, a totally Mediterranean area. We have already published uh, this uh, paper. Anybody, any of you who are interested, you can, on, on it, you can uh, download it from the BTCast uh, website. We have published it uh, as uh, reachable by all the public. We analyze the bioclimatic indexes in uh, viticulture used all over the world, like Winkler, Hugling, Cool Night Index, uh, BBLI and GSS and GSP, and we apply them in these four areas between uh, 1950 and 2015. And finally, with the estimation of temperatures from 2050 to 2019, uh, sorry, 95. Here we can see uh, several maps presented in our paper on how uh, climatic conditions have varied since 1950 to uh, 2015. And the red dots or the red areas show how uh, big these var uh, variations uh, have been uh, recorded. And here you can see how the different predictions or forecasts using the different indexes are, are represented in the second period, the second uh, timeline. We'll be seeing, we will be seeing uh, differences in the meteorological conditions in our areas of research, particularly in the RCP 8.5, that means conditions that are uh, or with uh, an increase of temperatures, the, the highest increase in temperatures in the future. As a summary, we can say regarding this climate change impact, we can say that in the future, there will be an upward trend for these uh, different indexes, Winkler, Heglin, Night Cold Index and GSS index indexes. This means that these indexes will be, or indices will be higher, whereas the BBLI and GSP, depending more on precipitation and humidity rates will be negative. So 
uh, rain will be less intense in the in the future. These climatic conditions could vary for the crop in the future, and we've seen that these conditions will will vary much more in the Mediterranean bioclimatic areas than in the Euro Siberian one, because the ocean is like. A, a factor for these temperature variations. So areas right now too cold for cultivation of the vine will, or maybe suitable areas for the cultivation of, uh, of, wine, of wine, mainly in the more altitudinal areas of the more Mediterranean areas. So viticulture could be introduced, introduced sorry, in these areas. Additionally, these uh, negative changes observed in the BB, LI, and GSP indices related to lower humidity and less uh, or, or uh, fewer rain uh, uh, rates will help us to reduce the possibility of a mildew attack on grapevines, mainly in the areas in the Euro Siberian region, as uh, we saw before, Plasmopara and uh, Powdery, uh, sorry, downy mildew is a very has a very high incidence. This trend of increasing temperature will cause some variations in cultural practices, such as the change of grape varieties. Very surely, we will have to introduce changes in the uses of uh, cultures with irrigation uh, treatments in in many vineyards and uh, transition of vineyards to higher areas with colder temperatures than right now. Thank you so much for your attention. This is more or less my uh, collaboration, my contribution from the University of Vigo. I am here to answer you um, any questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Javi. If you have any questions, you can please write them in the chat and we will be answering them later on. So let's give the floor now to the last section uh, from the three different uh, uh, vineyards. Vineyards. First is Carlos Alberte by Viña Costera. He is director of viticulture. So Carlos, whenever you want, you can uh, share your screen and uh, open your mic and your camera. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for being here and for for um, your attention. I am going to speak about the characteristics of the Betecast project in uh, Viña Costeira um, wine grower company. We are established since uh, 1968. In fact, you read 1986, but it's 68. Sorry, the numbers um, should be changed. I did not notice this. We are established in Galicia, in the Ribeiro and Valdeorras uh, Appellation of Origins. And we are very sensitive to mildew and botrytis, and uh, especially in Ribeiro, because our climate, our soil, our conditions, make us have fantastic potential characteristics for the production of high quality white wines, but it also demands a lot from us because our wine growing activities are really demanding. We have around 50 hectares, uh, grouping up more than 500 hectares of vineyards for uh, wine growers. And we have Mm, done a big, big effort, a great effort to, to, to enhance autochthonous varieties such as Godello, Albariño, Treixadura, Loureira for making um, high quality and fruity white wines with uh, remarkable good natural acidity, very low technique, uh, need of or resort to techniques because um, the natural parameters and the natural conditions uh, make us um, or provoke us have these magnificent wines. Well, we have several plots. One of the exploitations is the San Cibrao estate, uh, 
It is included in the Ribeiro uh, population of origin uh, with 12 hectares, 16 plots. The altitude is around 200 and 280 meters uh, above sea level with the Treixadura, Albariño, Dodello and Loreira varieties as main varieties. It was planted in 2001. It was a pioneer state because at that moment uh, in that area, mountainous area or hilly area, there was had never been um, a vineyard. And um, well, it's giving us uh, this, well, it's 12 hectares, as I said, and uh, it might seem to be very, very small, but in this area, in this context, it is a large extent. Another estate is the Pazo de Toves estate with 8.5 hectares. Uh, it is uh, it dates back to 1985 uh, with seven plots and the altitude is between 20, uh, 220 and 290 meters above sea level. The varieties are Trixadura, Albariño and Loureira. Um, it was a plot which uh, in required many costs to, to, to work on it, but it is giving us very good yields and very good results, and we are proud of it. The other estate I wanted to present is uh, the Valdeorras, uh, uh, Appellation of Origin, and we in Viña Costeira, the Viticast project is giving us a lot of information when it comes to preventing and especially recommending our wine growers phytosanitary uh, treatments in a way or a different way. We are very predictive um, thanks to the information from weather stations, from spore panels located at the vineyards with uh, not real time information, but a very high frequency uh, information that indicate the, uh, pref the phytosanitary pressure in the vineyard. And we are very quick uh, when it comes to phenological states and direct observation of fungi disease symptoms um, of the um, ones we study, mildew and botrytis. And uh, additionally, because of the its presence here in the Ribeiro area, uh, the presence of uh, Guignardia bidwelli or black rot. And we put a lot of importance on the weather forecast. Good weather forecasts are paramount to us to prevent any possible uh, treatment or prevent any problems thanks to those treatments. We have weather stations in Tobes, another one in San Cibrao, and the Ribeiro Appellation of Origin, and the third one is in the Valdeorras Appellation of Origin in, uh, in the Abeleira Estate. The advantage, thanks to these uh, weather stations, is that they give us real-time information. At any moment, we can consult on the mobile phone what are the data on humidity, maximum and minimum temperatures, um, thanks to Monet and the information and the program they provide us with. In terms of the spore panels uh, that are conducted by the Vigo University, the Ourense campus, what they do is to capture and measure the fungal pressure on vineyards. We have them in Tobes and San Cibrao in Ribeiro, in the Ribeiro Appellation of Origin and in Abeleira in the Valdeorras. Appellation of origin. And these uh, data come weekly. There's a weekly spore count. And we have a very good vision of the presence, the non tangible presence of the main fungi diseases. And as you can see in the photograph, we can, we have um, a very keen observation of symptoms. Um, we conduct these observations every week with a frequency of two, three days per week. And our main risk here is, uh, well, we have a high risk of big yield loss, both in terms of quality and quantity. 
So from April to September, we are constantly present in the vineyard trying to avoid or to prevent phytosanitary problems that would have a repercussion, negative repercussion on our crop. This belongs to 2019, which was a complicated year in terms of uh, milieu. You can see the symptoms in the cluster. We see uh, attacks in not only the clusters, but also in the leaves with very clear symptoms. You see here symptoms of black rot. rot. In this case, the Wignardia bidwelli. The, our presence, as I said, from April to September on the field is really, really high. Uh, because, uh, of course, we need to keep an eye on, on these vineyards. And with these data, we perform a weekly observation and we compare these observations. The University of Vigo provides us with the graphs and we can even establish a relationship between the um, spore level that might be present effectively at a certain point of time and the treatments that have been applied this is a more kind of clerk's or desk job, but we need to establish some time of relationship between the level of spores and the treatments applied. And this allows us to anticipate um, our actions to the treatment or even to avoid um, some treatment. In some cases, we have been able to not use or not apply some treatments because we have uh, put together all the cases regarding climate data, spores data, and um, weather forecasts, as well as the phenological state and the absence or presence of symptoms. And therefore, in the Ribeiro appellation of origin, uh, which is a rather complicated appellation of origin. Our system is really reliable. It provides us with very good value predictions um, according to phenological states, climate conditions, poor counting and observation of symptoms. We try to avoid unnecessary treatments or unnecessary applications of treatments. And we try to also provide our wine growers with uh, the most real and best um, advice possible. We try to minimize quantitative and qualitative losses um, of the crops, and we try to preserve our excellent uh, raw matter, our tradition, according to tradition, trying to value organoleptic characteristics, preserving grapes from damage or alterations. Thank you very much. Um, I'm open to any questions um, that you might want to write on the chat. And it's been a pleasure uh, presenting this work to you. Thank you very much, Carlos. We are going to now give the floor to the next presentation, the Bodega Matarropera presentation, Victor Vendrell, who is the research and uh, development manager in Bodega Matarramuera. He's going to present. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I have not shared the screen yet, right? Just give me a sec, please. Okay, share screen. Perfecto, Victor, ahora sí. Perfect, Victor, thank you. Mm -hmm. I would like to put it in presentation mode. This is it. Can you see it? Yes, perfectly well. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. And my name is Victor Vendrell. I work in the R plus D department of Bodegas Matarromera. Well, it's a family uh, company, really, a family business, Matarromera. The Viticast project for us is uh, represented an opportunity to learn, of course. And in fact, we are obtaining results 
to be able to develop a predictive modal uh, phase two diseases and a very useful one, I have to say. Mata Romera is a company or a business that is really present with different um, sellers in different uh, appellations of origin. Uh, different wineries, um, but we focus the, the main part of our activities in Castilla León. And in terms of the uh, Viticast project, well, we have focused on the Ribera del Duero, del Duero, sorry, which is where we have uh, 225 hectares. Well, a bit more because uh, these data come from some time ago. And Mata Romera might be the winery um, with the largest extension in, in this area. Apart from the Ribera del Duero appellation of origin, we're present in Toro, in Cigales, and in Rueda. You see here uh, the Douro River. You see here a zoom in. And there is a plot heterogeneity in terms of when, when trying to tackle, uh, test, for example, the spore collector, we need to choose very carefully what kind of uh, type of plot uh, we want to locate it. We were having three candidates, like the uh, plateau, the, then the river bank, so the limestone hills, the river bank, which is along the river Douro, and then we have, well, sorry, the plateau, the riverbank, and the limestone hills. Sorry, I was reading it the other way around. In these plots, in the limestone hills, we produce the best Mata Romera wines. And we were especially interested on the Solanas plot, which was the one that we finally chose. This is the shape of this plot. You could see it in the drawing. It is a, la a rather large plot with more than 20 hectares uh, where we grow Tempranillo, especially. The name Solanas uh, is given due to the fact that it is exposed to the sun almost all day. The, uh, it is oriented northwest to west, and it was planted in 1994. And what is the climate like there? Well, it is continental Mediterranean type of climate. And there are rather important thermal oscillations between the different seasons from 40, from minus 10, degrees Celsius to 42 plus 42 degrees Celsius. So you see um, the oscillations are rather, rather extreme. And the, in terms of uh, rainfall, well, there is a moderate low rainfall between 400 and 600 millimeters of water. We have very dry summers and long winters. Something which is typical of the Ribera del Duero area is that the thermal oscillations are really important. Um, thermal oscillations that usually occur during the ripening season, registering optimal daytime temperatures for development against cold nights. And these differences range between um, 10 and 20 degrees or 15 and 20 degrees. And we focus our efforts here in the Las Solanas estate or vineyard, because this is a it is paradigmatic for the Mata Romera because the best wines are coming from this, this plot uh, due to the exceptional quality of the grapes like uh, Reserva Prestige, um, Pago de las Solanas, Reserva and Prestige. These are the three most important names in the Mata Romera production. Well, you can imagine that there is a triangle with these three parameters and the combination of them are going to allow us to develop a predictive model. And this is 
what the Viticast project is focused on. And therefore, our goal would be to develop a risk model in order to have a rational use and coherent use of phytosanitary products. This has been mentioned before by the previous speakers. All the advantages of rationally using phytosanitary products due to many reasons. One of them is the economic reason, but of course the abuse of such chemicals is a problem because these substances are really harmful. And therefore, everything that means reducing them and focusing on the moment, the perfect moment to apply them would be an advance. In this triangle, we're interested in three parameters or three types of data. Phenology is one of them. Phenology is important because among other things, the parasite fungus as any parasite synchronizes its life cycle with the life cycle of the host. And therefore there are moments uh, the plant development where these plants are more vulnerable to the presence of the fungus in this case. It is also very important to think about the weather. What is the weather like now? What is the weather like tomorrow? This information is provided to us by the weather stations. And of course, the third part of the triangle, the third um, angle would be the spores amount of spores, type of spores, the spore ID, and therefore the sampler becomes key here. We were having difficulties during the first year, of course, uh, because of the due, due to the complicated situation um, of the pandemic of the COVID-19. We are in the second year of uh, development of this project. And what do we do now? As I indicated in the previous, Scheme um, phenology is the uh, foremost and most important uh, part. We make a follow up of phenology in order to compare it with other data, as of course, a spores sampler. We collect spores, which is different to other wineries that participate in the Viticast project. We have been for the last two years acquiring knowledge in order to be able to identify the spores. We have a microscope that allows, uh, well, there is a lab that allows us to use their microscope and we are working on the identification of these spores. We see here an image of the spores collector or sampler in the Las Solanas plot and the weather station beside it. And therefore the second leg or angle of the triangle is there. So phenology, spores sampler, and of course the weather stations or the weather forecast, which is the third leg of the model. Firstly, what we did was to select the vineyard, Solanas in this case, and the uh, Viticast plot or the different rows and lines. So we have a control row and then we have um, the area where we reduce the use of products and different, um, well, the different products. And therefore we, or our inputs, right? So we collect samples of the control row and what would be the activity by the um, by this winery well one of the activities obviously is to provide information for the model that is to feed the model with information um, as it was said at the beginning of the presentation through the uh, sampling what do we sample well, our biological study, of course, every week we collect the spores, we um, 
put them at the microscope and we try to identify them and we note down what we see. Then the soil, in order to be able to compare the treatments to see whether they were um, effective, like for example, if the central row, the control row has been affected or not affected by these treatments. And then of course, the, the wine, which is the third part of the sampling. What is our experience? Well, according to our experience, the model is working. We have compared information on mildew, oidium, botrytis, spores count. We are not um, assessing the number of spores, only whether they are present or absent. In the case of mildew, sorry, oidium and botrytis, we have uh, cross data with the weather station. We have uh, data from the 19th, 22, 25 uh, days of the of the month and in July. And according to the prediction of the weather station on risks, you see the oidium is high on the 19th and uh, on the 22nd. And we, this coincides with our observations, and this is very important to validate the technique because what we see in the um, sampler or the collector is reflected in a predictive weather model. So we are um, even improving this model. We are refining the model, and therefore we can say that it is a useful model. So the second year, we performed a second validation. We repeated the tasks that we have to develop under the project, both collecting spores, soil samples, and vinifications. And therefore, what are the conclusions in Matarromera out of that can be extracted or drawn from all this activity? Well, we want to um, develop a spore concentration prediction model to reduce the number of phytosanitary products, not only the quantity, but the, in order to be able to apply them at the certain specific, the appropriate moment, the ideal moment, and in the ideal quantity, even though a weather station would give us an indication of the possible presence of fungal infections, the response by the winery is to apply phytosanitary products to all the vineyards, because of course there is a risk there, but that uh, involves a huge expense, especially in such a a winery as Mata Romera with such an extension of surface and uh, also taking into account that up to 80% of this application is absolutely useless. And we can optimize as well the number of times we apply these products uh, from the phytosanitary point of view. We must not forget the goal of phytosanitary products reaching these first threshold or risk threshold, we will have to understand that it is not only the presence of uh, these infectious agents, which is risky, but the amount, the concentration of uh, what we call the propagules um, is also interesting and, and important for us. And therefore, in collaboration with other wineries of the area, we are able to um, conduct or create an algorithm to identify times of infection based on meteorological data. And we are also optimizing, hence, the number of phytosanitary chemical treatments in viticulture. I hope that my presentation was interesting for all of you. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, now thank you very much, uh, Victor. Now we are uh, giving the floor to Vicente Abete, who is the responsible person to speak um, for this second, the, the, the last 
winery that is going to give us a presentation today. Thank you very much, Vicente. Can you can you see it? Okay, it's still loading. We only see your black screen, so maybe you have to go back one step, maybe. Okay, I will share again my screen. Yes, now you, you have to put it in full screen. I'm doing that. Yes, but let, maybe you, you have to go to the very first slide and then try that again. Yes, that's it. Sorry for uh, sorry about that. So this is the very first screen. I shall put it in full screen mode, but no way. I don't know what's happening here. Just uh, don't worry, even though you don't share it in full screen mode, we can see it properly. So shall I leave it like this? Yes, yes, don't worry. We are not really sure about what's happening, but we can read it properly, so don't worry. You can use this, uh, this mode. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon to you all. Well, welcome, my name is Vicente Abete. I am responsible of viticulture in the Hacienda Monasterio Winery. I am uh, responsible for this uh, area in the in the cellar. First of all, I will explain our our job a bit. This uh, winery is located in uh, Pesquera de Duero, a uh, village in the province of Valladolid, in the right um, right. Uh, right hand of the river at around 800 um, meters of altitude. It was um, created in 1991. So right now uh, the uh, uh, vineyard has around 30 years with 90 hectares in a southern southward uh, hill protected from the north by a uh, highland just right on our back, so protected from the uh, northern winds. The, the cli uh, climate type is a continental, very funny one, because uh, it has a high contrast, very stark contrast. This uh, vineyard uh, has a very dry soil, but a high start, a start contrast between day and night and winter time is really, really chill. Uh, rain, uh, uh, rain is um, not too high, but only happens in springtime, springtime and in autumn. As for the, um, the types of winery, of, uh, sorry, of grapes is uh, Tintofino on clones selected from old vines from the region. And then it's 13% of Cabernet Sauvignon and a 5% of Merlot and 2% of Malbec used in the final mix. We get just one wine as a result of all these mm, types of, of grapes. In the end, the mix uh, is created using all these wine, uh, grapes, sorry. So we take all the grape collected by hand using boxes or crates during three weeks between 18 to 23 degrees then there is a maceration process to extract uh, as much of the um, the skin of the grape and then we we, we carry out a malolactic fragmentation and uh, all throughout this period we extract as much uh, uh, presence as possible of the uh, wood in the wine and then we carry out two months um, in a two, two month period in uh, in the in the in the cellar 
And then we had three different wines with uh, varied times in, in, the, in the cellar. But the composition is more or less the same as shown before. They are wines from the parcel. It's just one wine as a result from a mix of a variety of grapes. Since the very beginning, we have been working with uh, biological agriculture certified by the CAECID, that is the um, they call a biological agriculture council of Castilla and Leon certify that all our wines comply with the uh, regulation. These certificates, the way we understand uh, viticulture, we always gave or put at the highest importance to the care of uh, the soil and the environment. We don't, or we consider that the use of uh, pesticides and herbicides only alter our identity. So we try as much as possible to avoid the use of pesticide so that our wines will have the highest identity, highest character, uh, typical of our environment. In line with all this, with the respect to the environment, when uh, the idea was brought to us to collaborate with the Bitikas project, we decided that, that to keep on researching on offering the best wines and grapes with the highest respect. That is why we decided to control the number of spores and the time of a collection of spores and how they have an impact on the diseases. And that is why we selected a, a plot uh, in line with our philosophy. That is a plot with the same uh, orientation, southward, on a, on a slope, cultivated in the, the type of uh, uh, vine, uh, vertical uh, vines with very low yielding around one kilo per hectare. No, sorry, three, uh, 35 hundred kilos per hectare. Once we started collecting spores from the three uh, funguses, fungi, botrytis, mildew, or powdery and, and downy mildew, we started seeing results and understanding what was happening in our vineyard and how to better minimize and, as Rosa said, to, to use as much as, as the best we could the treatments, we saw that botrytis is very uh, uh, low uh, in presence in our areas compared to Galicia. So the number of spores in botrytis, and as we will be seen before in downy mildew, we see two main peaks, but not at all significant, it is very rare that in our area we will be having problems with uh, botrytis. We normally find them at the end of the campaign. And as you can see by the number of uh, spores collected during this time, incident is, is almost none. In the case of uh, powdery mildew, as Javier was mentioning before, this is the disease that is uh, the most usual one affecting us and creating severe problems to us because it is a condition, a disease that starts very soon before the flower. We have already powdery mildew and all throughout the campaign and in the winter time, we collect spores. There are ups and downs in the number of spores that we have five significant one all throughout the cycle. And this creates problems that we need to monitor it continuously. And the last uh, presence of a fungi is a, the downy mildew. As you can see here, it's a very low presence with only one uh, significant peak 
coinciding with the rainfall and our Galician colleagues are really or must surely be very jealous of us because of these very, very low downy mildew presence. So it is not really affecting us thanks to our continental climate, very dry climate where this spore is really difficult to see here. With all these data collected, we are able to understand how to use and, and when and in which dose, doses the different treatments. And we see that the preventive treatments, always with uh, biological product, products at the beginning of the campaign, do not really have any, any sense at all. We always start with stems up between 20 to 30 centimeters, but only in the case of a high rainfall, we won't be seeing any problems. And the same with, um, I mean, with the powdery and um, mildew and botrytis, but the very first focus, the very first times when we will be seeing higher number of spores, we that, that happens at the end of May, and in our area that means in uh, in in the middle of the um, flowery or blossoming uh, moment. If we consider all this data now, knowing the number of spores, our conclusion is that we can we can stop uh, applying the first treatment, and that will improve our care for the environment and also we will let's say use less uh, machinery something that sometimes is not taking into account because we will be avoiding um, damaging the structure of the soil we will be using less combustible less fuel so we would be optimizing and using in a more rational way the treatment I don't really have anything else to say. I just invite you to to just uh, address us your questions or doubts or commentaries, and I am here to help you out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vicente, and thank you all following uh, these two hour long webinar. We are a bit out of time so let's go into the uh, round of questions so uh, i invite you all, all all the participants to open your mics and cameras so paloma if you can uh, send us our transfer or translate the questions and i i only want to say that the recording of the presentations will be published in the Info Wine Journal, so you will be able to see all of them later on and consult them in, in the uh, journal. One question by different participants. When and, uh, and where these models will be found? Maybe Deborah can answer that. Well, the models of viticulture, of viticulture will be at your disposal. I have left, I have uh, uploaded a, a link in the chat and you can then click on that and access a demo. These models do not take into account the spores aspect. That is a part of the project that is not included in any model yet. Any of you who want to, to test the model, you can ask for it using that link, we ask you, where are you uh, working? We ask you your whereabouts because we will be using the most, uh, the nearest public station. In the case of Spain, Spain we have uh, several uh, stations introduced, but, but in, let's say, Brazil, we don't really have public stations incorporated in the system, but we can provide you the most um, a list of public stations so that you can use them as a test. Thank you, Deborah. Now, Amadine, 
asks, what is the technology used for the uh, count of spores? Javier, if you want to answer that. Yes, the methodology is the one uh, used at the global level for any sort of microbiological counting in the atmosphere. There are many physics physics research and studies and i have uploaded a link in the chat where you can find uh, a book so that you can understand the methodology it is in english if you click on it and, and you will be directed to the spanish version also thank you javier and then marcel asks a very interesting question and 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 wants to uh, congratulate all the participants. He wants to know about the control of plamosphora. What, what is the importance of the, of the application of fungicides in this case? Because we know that in springtime, the vine grows very quickly and uh, the um, uh, fungi are not uh, transmitted to the tissues in, in uh, development, in, in growth, in the growing stage. Carlos, maybe? Thank you very much for your question. Very interesting. From April to June, the growth um, is really high, and therefore, depending, well, in the vineyard, I mean the, the, the plant growth, right? And depending on the climate conditions, the um, interval where you need to apply these products uh, depend whether the climate or the phyto phytosanitary broader uh, pressure if uh, you you might need to apply it in every seven eight days or if the climate is not so dry maybe you can apply every two weeks we always use um, sprinklers and we always use uh, well spray and we um, use these products on the two sides of the leaves, um, the front and the back of the of the leaves, and it is important to have uh, all the branches very well um, laid and, of course, trimmed appropriately, so that we can favor and more even distribution of the product. And also, interestingly enough, when we apply these products, fungicides, etc., and we think that there might be a milieu, a milieu case or a plasmopara case, or because maybe we saw some symptoms, if we apply and then we see the new buds and they are healthy, it looks as if we are happier and we are uh, relieved because we have the um, sensation that we have uh, fought the disease. This is in new buds. In all leaves, well, if you have symptoms, well, they are there. You might have these symptoms, or maybe you can uh, stop the advance of the disease or the disease progress um, when these areas of the plant become dry. Thank you very much, Carlos. I don't know if anybody would like to give a different answer to this or complement this response. Yes, I would like to nuance this response because in the Rias Baixas area, I think that we are the origin of mildew in Galicia. That is where we have more plasmopara viticola or mildew in, in the whole of Galicia. I would like to say that obviously the systemic treatments at the beginning of the season allow for the spread of this product in the sap, the sap. And even though the um, growth is really important, normally is this is enough. And an important thing that we need to mention is that it is essential to uh, perform revisions uh, to the vineyard and of course the machinery uh, to apply the treatment should be in the perfect state so that we can check that the treatment has been efficient. We have been applying these techniques to optimize the treatments 
for many, many years. And except for some several years where we had conditions extra favorable to or prone to mildew, except for these years, we are in this area uh, that is Atlantic area, very prone to mildew. We can uh, stay one month, even up to one month without applying any treatments. Um, breathing quietly. So for Victor, what are the parameters that you use to measure the soil? Okay, um, I don't know which uh, screen I'm using, but still doesn't matter. It's it's enough. We can we can hear you. Sorry, the question was, what are the parameters that you measure when you uh, sample the soil? Well, our soil samples, we use them to evaluate, to assess the concentration, the presence or absence of phytosanitary products in com compared to the Viticast plot or the conventional um, treatment plot compared to the control row, um, which of course is not being treated. If you want to get to know the parameters, that is the um, phytosanitary products that we measure. Well, I have all the reports and therefore if you want to know uh, such detail, I can provide you with all the details. Okay, if the participant is uh, interested, um, he or she can write the question in the chat box and we will send um, him or her the answer. What are the oidio, anti oidio or anti midu um, treatments that you use and what is the average per season? This is to uh, Vicente. Okay, in our vineyard, we only can use uh, products that are regulated by the council. And therefore, in our case, it is simple. We don't have a lot to use. I mean, we focus on sulfur uh, when controlling oidium and we apply every fortnight, every 15 days normally. We alternate different concentrations of sulfur. We uh, alternate liquid and powder applications um we focus more on the powder applications in the last phases the moment there is more vegetation and more it is more difficult to make liquid sulfur to penetrate well in the plant and therefore it is important to have good porosity and therefore we need to have a good management of vegetation of the vegetation so that these treatments can reach the innermost parts of the plant. Thank you, Vicente. The last question, because we are much beyond the allowed time. Have you experienced uh, ozone applications? Have you used it? Um, have you studied it? No, not me. I know that there are, there are people using it. Some neighbors of ours have been using it this year. What I can tell about uh, their comments is that they need to uh, treat weekly. In the end, apparently what they are doing is to clean the spores in case there are any spores. What I know is that you need to really be, be vigilant. In the case of Mata Romera, yes, we are using ozone in a project, but as Vicente is saying, it is a whole strategy, ozone has a limited or restricted penetration capacity, and we are normally using it to treat uh, wood disease or diseases in the wood of the vineyard. Uh, it is true that one of the handicaps by ozone is that the biocide capacity is really powerful. And after <clears throat> and treatment with ozone, you need to really care for the microbiota. We cannot just apply ozone and then forget about the soil because at that moment there might be some microorganisms uh, that might grow. These microorganisms that are really um, powerful when it comes to growing and they can take advantage of the temporary situation. And therefore, as Vicente was mentioning, we need to go back to that periodically. Um, 
ideally weekly, yes. Thank you very much. We are going to just uh, cut here, uh, interrupt our session. We don't want to abuse from abuse you, I mean the speakers or the participants or the interpreters. And um, well, I would like to thank you for the great job that you have been um, doing your great presentations, great contents, and I would like to thank the uh, participants for their interest. Lucia, I'm going to give you the floor to officially close this event. Thank you very much to you all, to everybody. I hope that it has been fruitful and uh, useful to all of you. And if at the end of the webinar or maybe uh, in the future, you might have uh, some questions, some comments to share with us. You can, of course, use our web page and write whatever you want there. Thank you very much to everybody. Bye-bye.